¿Qué pasa to the pack? It is pack here. Happy 2023. Happy New Year. In today's video, I'm covering the players that got the biggest downgrades of 2022 on every single NBA team. So basically the biggest downgraded player of every team. I'm going to do that from the start of NBA 2K22 in January to December 20 2K23. That's essentially what I'm doing in this video. Okay. If you like that kind of content when it comes to player ratings and changes and all that kind of stuff, please join the pack and subscribe. I'm going to be doing all year and let's get in main the very first team that actually got no downgrades whatsoever were the indiana pacers you shouldn't be surprised by the indiana pacers not having any downgrades the thing is if you look at their standing place they are actually one of the better teams in the east right now and no one thought this team would be good at all now i'm not saying this is going to be a playoff team by the end of the year but tyrese halliburton has been you know a shocker miles turn has been good benedict Mathis has been amazing Buddy Hill's been solid. No one's gone down. So no wonder that they're right here at the very end of the list because no one's going down because the teams are doing good and they're all young. So of course. The next team is the Portland Trailblazers with Yusuf Nurkic minus one. Nurkic was the second best player on the Portland Trailblazers before the end of the year. And then now he is the fourth best player. He's still good. He's still solid. The thing is, is that his scoring has been inconsistent this season. However, he's still one of the best players on the team, and it's only a minus one downgrade. I mean, if you're on this list at the very bottom of the list, you're chilling. You're not upset at all. Next player at number 28 is Lou Dort with a minus one. He was good. He was a great defender, but we really thought he was going to get a lot better this season, and he kind of didn't. He just kind of stagnated. Now, it's not a bad thing. It's just that other players got better, and he didn't which is why he's on this list. He's still good, but just not as good as we thought he was going to be. Up next with the Phoenix Suns, we have Chris Paul minus one. And if we're being completely honest, he probably deserved a much bigger downgrade throughout the year, but they were decided to be nice to Chris Paul and give him only a minus one. Look, Chris Paul is getting older. That's a simple fact, right? Like offensively, he has slowed down. He's still, he's still one of the greatest players of all time, but there's no doubt that he's getting older and slowing down offensively. For the Spurs, it took me a while to find someone, but at the very end, I realized that Josh Richardson did go down minus one. Josh Richardson was on the Celtics at the start of the year. He was a decent player going to the Spurs. Yes, he had a good little start for the Spurs, but now he's kind of turned into a bench player because they don't really want to win and he's the only one that can actually really score. He goes minus one. It's not a big deal. Josh Richardson needs to find a home somewhere else to be an important player because he's only 29, but he's a 75 overall as of today. Up next is CJ McCollum on the Pelicans minus one. So CJ McCollum enters the Pelicans. He does amazing for the Pelicans in the playoffs. But then in the second part of the year, he really slowed down. Even though the Pelicans have been amazing this year, CJ McCollum has been struggling. However, lately, these past couple games have been very good. It's only a minus one for CJ. And maybe it's because of age, maybe because of a new environment, maybe because of the role has changed because Brandon Ingram and Zion Williamson, who knows? But CJ McCollum now has finally found his group again. For the Grizzlies, it is Steven Adams. Steven Adams only goes minus one for the year. Not that big of a deal. I, I mean, he's still the same player he was last year. A great screen setter, a good defender, a good rebounder. He can score into the basket. Same guy as last year. I mean, it's not really much of a change. A minus one is almost irrelevant for Steven Adams here. For the Celtics, you know, as you can imagine, it's not going to be very easy to find someone going down on this team if they've been so good this year, like 2022. But Malcolm Brogdon did go down minus one. He was on the Indiana Pacers, averaging 19 points per game, and now he's just averaging like 13 and being a defender on the Celtics. He's still a good player, but the role that he's had is diminished. He's still solid, but it's just amount of effort and scoring that has been needed from him is kind of diminished. For Cleveland, there's only one player that's had even a minor downgrade, and that's Jared Allen minus two. Jared Allen was the best player on the Cleveland Cavaliers at the start of 2022, and now he is the fourth best player. That's not a bad thing. Jared Allen is still very solid. It's just that this team ended up getting Donovan Mitchell, Darius got a lot better and Evan Mobley got better it's not a bad thing that Jared Allen's like the fourth best player getting a two minus two downgrade because he's still good it's just that this team got so much better around him for the Denver Nuggets it is Jamal Murray minus two Jamal Murray was injured so it was really hard to give him a real rating he was injured for most of the year he was the second best player on the Nuggets without a doubt up to like an 87 overall at one point He's slowed down, and he's slowed down because he's recovering from injury. You know, this team is brand new. You know, Michael Porter Jr. is a much better scorer now. Bones Highland's a better scorer. Aaron Gordon is doing so well that your role is being that number two scorer is slowing down because everyone else is getting better, and you're coming back from injury. He's still good. I think his rating is going to go up throughout the year, like this 2023. 
but he's clearly lost a little bit of a step. For the Miami Heat, it is Jimmy Jordan minus two. Look, Jimmy Butler was leading a team to an NBA Finals just a couple seasons ago, so that's why he had such a high rating at a 94 overall. I think everybody knew at that time that rating was a little inflated and maybe shouldn't have been that high. And I personally feel like he's in the correct rating now at a 92 overall. He's a great defender. He's a, he's a scorer when he needs to be. But to be a 94 overall was a little high. For the Toronto Raptors, it is Gary Trent Jr. So Gary Trent Jr. is such a weird story. He goes minus two to 79 overall now, right? But at the start of the year, he was an 81 overall. And I'd argue that he was underrated because he was the second leading scorer on the team and he was the best defender. Well, that story has changed this year. Now his scoring has slowed down and his defense got a lot worse this year. So he gets a minus two and you could argue it should have been more. It's a fair rating, but if you can find that defense that he used to have, this will go higher. For the Wizards, it is Daniel Gafford. At the start of 2022, he was looking very good. I know he was averaging nine points per game, six rebounds, and very few minutes, only 20 minutes per game. They started to give him a starting role and his rating went up to a 79 overall. But the rating is slowed down again. When you add Porzingis to the team, that's what's going to happen. It's just your role is going to slow down. He's still solid. 77 overall, minus two for him. But the role has diminished. And so his rating has diminished. Clay Thompson. So Clay Thompson has been injured, obviously. That's like the major reason his rating has been going down from like the 90 overall that we know him to, to an 85. Now, Clay Thompson was struggling to score when he came back as well. And the defense is not there anymore, at least not what it used to be. But he's starting to pick it up again. The scoring is coming back for sure. The defense hasn't yet, but he's he's still that guy. He's just not as good as he was pre-injury. An 85 overall is a good rating for him. You know, he got a minus two. It's not that big of a downgrade. It's a fine downgrade. Now we get into the big downgrades. Tobias Harris minus three. That's a big one. Tobias Harris was an 85 overall, a borderline all-star into a good player, a solid player, but not what he was. Tobias Harris has picked up his pace when needed to. Whenever Tyrese Maxey or James Harden has slowed down, he has sped up. But when everybody is healthy, there's no doubt that Tobias Harris is the weaker of these four. And I just think that that's fine. 82 overall is a fine rating for him, but he's not the all-star that he wanted to be. For the Detroit Pistons, it is absolutely Sadiq Bay. I don't know what happened to Sadiq Bay. Minus three for him for the year. He was looking so promising. It just fell apart so fast. Again, you have all these players coming in, taking his role from him, right? But you could always argue that he was maybe just doing inflated stats because the team sucked and someone needed to score. And he was averaging 16 on 39% from the field, which is not good. So you could argue that maybe Sadiq Bay wasn't as good as we thought he was in the first place and he was overrated. But still, you know, the downgrade is serious and he's young, so it could change, but he did not look good for a while. For the Los Angeles Lakers, no surprise, it is Russell Westbrook from an 82 to a 79 for the year. Even though I argue that Russell Westbrook is underrated, it does not change the fact that he's clearly lost a step from who he was back with, you know, the Thunder, back with the Rockets, back with the Wizards. He's not that player anymore. Outside of the 80 overall clubs, it may be a little ridiculous, but he's definitely not as good as he used to be, which was like a 90 overall. So no doubt his, his downgrade is deserving. For the Sacramento Kings, it is Harrison Barnes minus three from an 82 overall to a 79. Now this has got to be the only minus three that does not care he's downgraded that much. Harrison Barnes has turned into a role player for the Kings, but he doesn't care because the Kings are winning games. Malik Monk and, and, and Kevin and Darren Fox and Sabonis have all stepped up that Harrison Barnes probably does not care at all that he's slowed down. For the Utah Jazz, Mike Conley has gone minus three. If Mike Conley was the 16 point per game scorer on elite defense that he used to be on this Utah Jazz team, he would be very happy. He's still solid and he's still a, a locker room presence and he's still doing a good job, but there's no doubt that this team would be even more impressive if Mike Conley was even near his prime. But minus three for the year for Mike Conley. For the Atlanta Hawks, we have John Collins, minus three. Maybe one of the biggest disappointments in the NBA. John Collins was expected to be a 22 point per game scorer like he was for a little bit. Instead, he is absolutely slowed down, which makes no sense because he's entering his prime and he has so much hope around him. And yet John Collins can't figure it out. It's not a good look. He's gone down three. I'd argue he could be even more. John Collins has been maybe, I, if I had to give a vote, he'd be the biggest disappointment of the year. For the Rockets, you know, it'd be hard to downgrade as a player to get a minus four for a player in a team where everyone has the green light. However, Garrison Matthews all the way down here goes minus four for the year. Garrison Matthews last year averaged 10 points per game on 40% from the field, 36% from three, and now is basically not even playing really. He's just become non-existent for the Houston Rockets. You know, I thought the upgrade they gave him last year was a little aggressive, and it's turning out to be true because that upgrade he got was removed immediately. 
For the Dallas Mavericks, it is Kemba Walker minus four. You should not be surprised at Kemba Walker's massive downgrade. He has not looked anywhere remotely as good as he did back with the Hornets or even with the Celtics where he was still looking decent. With the New York Knicks, he was terrible. And with the Dallas Mavericks, he's also terrible. Minus four for him. He is not an 80 overall club member anymore. I swear, point guards age so fast and regress so fast. Kemba Walker is a prime example of this. For the Orlando Magic, we're going to go to Cole Anthony minus four. Cole Anthony was the best player on the Orlando Magic at the start of the year, and now he's one of the worst, not one of the worst, but one of the lesser rated players. What's going on? Well, first, he's only 22 years old. Let's calm down. Last season, he was averaging 16 points per game, but the thing is, he was given the green light. As you can tell, he was averaging 39% from the field, which is not good. Listen, if you're given the green light and averaging a very low field goal percentage, that's always a bad sign. And yes, he had a high rating, but that was because he was scoring a lot but now we can realize that maybe that rating was a little bit of an overreaction no one was on the team that could score he had to be the only one he gets a minus four for the year he slowed down for the charlotte hornets we have gordon hayward when it comes to injuries this man is attacked all the time last season he was averaging 16 points per game the year before that he's averaging almost 20. we know how good gordon hayward can be when healthy and when he's given you know the green light but he has a minus four for the year He's just not what he used to be again. It's a shame. Injuries attacked him pretty hard. It's always going to be a common story. People who downgrade a lot. It is what it is. Gordon Hayward. He got hurt. Let's stick with the injury talk. Kawhi Leonard minus four with the Clippers. Yeah. I mean, you're 95 overall. Talked about one of the best in the NBA. The best two-way player in basketball. And to someone who can literally cannot stay healthy. That's Kawhi Leonard. I mean, when he's on it, he's one of the best in the NBA. He can lead people to championships. But when he's hurt, it's just you're not playing. And how can you rank someone at all? For the Chicago Bulls, it is Zach Levine minus four. Now, I'm going to 100% disagree with this one. I have felt like Zach Levine has been the best player on the Chicago Bulls, or at least tied with DeMar DeRozan as the best player. And I feel that really strongly lately in your last couple of games. Zach Levine's an amazing player. He's been one of their best players, maybe the best player every year. I don't know why he's an 84 overall minus four. I think that's a ridiculous overreaction by 2K. I already talked about this player a little bit, but the Milwaukee Bucks minus five is Pat Connaughton from an 80 overall club member to 75. Look, looking back, I don't know why Pat Connaughton was in the 80 overall club. He was a pretty essential player for the Milwaukee Bucks, averaging 10 points per game last season, and he was a great three-point shooter. But no doubt he should have never been in the 80 overall club. In fact, maybe he might be one of the worst 80 overall club members of all time. He's solid. He's a good player. I'm not saying he's a bad player, but just not an 80 overall club member. I don't think any of you will be shocked with this one. Ben Simmons minus five from an all-star level player to a bench player. I mean, the thing is, Ben Simmons isn't a bench player. He's a defender. He's turned. He's just turned into a really good role player, a similar player like Draymond Green, where he's so good at what he does, the fact that he can't do some things doesn't matter. Ben Simmons is so good at defense and is so good at slashing when he has opportunity to, and his playmaking is solid. That it, the scoring kind of doesn't matter with him, especially when the team is so good with KD and Kyrie. It doesn't matter. So he went down, but he doesn't care because his role is what he wants it to be. Man, a major downgrade is Rudy Gobert, minus five. He was voted the most overrated player by you guys. You know, he was a 90 overall club member now to an 85 overall. He's still one of the better centers in the NBA, but there's no doubt that his lack of scoring really shines in the NBA now, and it's, it's getting exposed. And the final player at number one is Derrick Rose, minus five. Derrick Rose was an 83 overall to a 78. He was one of the best players on the Knicks, now to becoming someone who barely comes off the bench. Derrick Rose, you could argue his rating should go down even more now. I mean, he's 34 years old, point guard that has relied on his athleticism. We know how point guards age poorly, and he's a prime example of that. He still has some stuff in the NBA. He could be a good bench player, but being one of the best players on a team is just not going to happen anymore for Derrick Rose. And especially with all the injuries he's had, it's not realistic. Those are the players that had a bad year. What do you think? Leave it in the comments below. And if you like this channel, please give it a sub. I'll see you guys next time.